What if I told you that you've been hearing music wrong your entire life? In other words, what if I told you that the way your ears perceive music and sound in general is fundamentally flawed? Don't believe me? Check this out. Here is a simple melody made up of neighboring notes on the piano. If I asked you to quantify the pitch of every note and then plot them on a graph, what would that graph look like? Now, I know that's somewhat of an arbitrary question, so here's two graphs for you to choose from. Would you pick A or B? Here's the melody again for reference. Chances are you probably picked A, and for good reason too. After all, it's not like the relative distance between the last two notes is drastically larger than the distance between the first two notes. Now let's consider a more interesting melody. Here are the frequencies for each of these notes. Since we established earlier that the relationship between notes is linear, if we simply add a fixed frequency value to each note, say 400 hertz, then we should still hear the same melody, just at a higher pitch. And if we do just that, we get this. Doesn't sound much like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star anymore, does it? Most, if not all, of the music that you listen to is based on the same 12 notes. They make up what's called an octave and repeat themselves as you go up and down. So if you start from one note and count 12 notes up, you get the same note, just an octave higher. If we start from the middle note on the keyboard, which we call middle C, and play every successive C note above that, we would get something like this. The frequencies of the first two Cs are roughly 262 Hz and 524 Hz, which gives us a difference of 262. The second last C has a frequency of 2093 Hz, and the last C has a frequency of 4186 Hz, which gives us a difference of 2093. So the difference between the last two notes is actually 8 times greater than the difference between the first two notes. In other words, the frequency doubles with every octave, and graph B actually correctly models musical pitches. In fact, if we go back to our very first melody, which is actually just a chromatic scale for those of you familiar with music theory, the frequency of each successive note is not obtained by adding a fixed value to the previous note, but actually by multiplying. To get the frequency of every note, you would just multiply the frequency of the previous note by roughly 1.06, or more accurately, the 12th root of 2, since there's 12 notes per octave. And if we wanted to find the frequency of the note that's exactly one octave higher, we would multiply the frequency of the lower note by the 12th root of 2 to the power of 12, or simply 2. This matches our earlier observation of how frequencies double with every octave, thus proving that graph B correctly plots the frequencies of every note. So why is it that our ears perceive pitch as linear when clearly it isn't? Is there something wrong with our ears? Well, the short answer is that's just how our ears work. Our brains don't interpret pitch based on the raw frequency difference between two sounds, but on their proportional difference. That's why in the simple melody from the start of this video, you perceive the distance between the last two notes to be the same as the distance between the first two. It's because they are, despite having unequal raw differences. Since the frequency of the second note was always 1.06 times that of the first note, to your ears, they represent the same jump. In music theory jargon, the jump between two notes is called an interval. So whenever you hear the same interval, your ears will always perceive that jump to be equivalent, even if the starting and ending notes are drastically apart. That's why a melody will always sound the same, regardless of where you start, as long as the intervals that make up that melody don't change. In fact, this logarithmic phenomenon is not only observed in our perception of pitch, but also in our perception of volume. Let's say you're listening to your favorite song, but it's a bit quiet, so you double the volume. Despite what your ear perceives, the absolute volume is actually increased tenfold, because volume, just like pitch, also operates logarithmically. This is why, when dealing with volume, we typically use units of decibels, since decibels are inherently logarithmic. Interestingly enough though, many engineers are actually unaware of how we really perceive volume and still sometimes design volume controls as linear, which can result in imperceptible changes at the higher end of the spectrum and extreme variations at the lower end. What's even more interesting is that hearing isn't even the only sense that is perceived logarithmically. This happens to be the case for pretty much all of our senses. In these two plots, you can tell almost immediately that the plot on the right has more dots than the one on the left. 
but if I showed you these two plots, it would take you a bit longer to reach the same conclusion. Despite the fact that, in both scenarios, the plot on the right has 10 dots more than the plot on the left. Thus, our perception of sight is also based on proportional differences just like our hearing, and other analogous observations can also be made for our other senses. So, why did we evolve to perceive logarithmically? Given how chaotic the physical world can be, it's important for our brains to handle a wide range of inputs without being overwhelmed. Logarithmic perception allows us to map this huge range of physical stimuli to a more manageable and meaningful range of perception. That's why your ears can detect sounds as quiet as a whisper or as loud as an engine. In fact, studies have shown that even our perception of numbers is logarithmic. If I asked you what number is halfway between 1 and 9, you'd most likely say 5. But if I asked the same question to a third grader, it's likely that they would say 3. This is because linearity is learned, whereas our innate perception of numbers is logarithmic. Similarly, some people say that our perception of music is linear because of how we learn music. If you look at the keys on a piano, you'll see that every note is equally spaced. Or if you write out a chromatic scale, there's no indication that each note is actually increasing exponentially. But if you look at a guitar, you'll notice that the width of each fret becomes increasingly smaller as you get closer to the center. Ironically, despite our attempts to make everything linear, some aspects of music still can't be fully linearized. So, perhaps to a child who hasn't yet learned what a number line is, or how music notation works, it might not be so surprising to learn that the relationship between notes and their frequencies looks something like this. 